Hello everybody, this is Gail, and I was talking to one of my subscribers the other day, who's also a Fun Stampers Journey coach, and he was asking me about uh, fairy doors and fairy houses, and I have done a fairy house as a votive, and I sincerely thought I had done this on video. But then when I looked at the date of the pictures that I took, um, the pictures were taken in April, and I didn't start, of last year, and I didn't start making fairy houses until, uh, I mean, making videos until May. So I did not do a tutorial on this, so I thought I would do one. Now, I don't have a votive that's this size. This is a pretty large one. Um, but I do have this one, little glass votive that I got at Dollar Tree. So the dollar, the, matter of fact, this was also at Dollar Tree, but I haven't seen this shape in a long time. It's actually a vase, but I chose to make it into a votive, and then I sat it on top of a one of the little electric tea lights, and I turn that on when I want light to come through. But I, I show, went around once. I'll do it again just to show you some of the things that I put on here. Um, I covered it in brown clay. And I do believe I used scrap clay for that. And so that's why I've got this mound of clay here. I'm going to mix that all together. Because you probably know if you mix... Um, all different colors of clay together you will get a dark brown or a grayish brown but even a grayish brown would be okay and I used different this is the front door I used um, this is actually a finding uh, I mean a little toggle that I found and I used the flat part for the door handle and then the heart part which this fit into I used that for like a little door knocker and I made little hinges. I put rocks around it. And then this looks like a stone um, walkway. And then I just added little things. I molded some things, you know, little flowers. I think those were made with a cutter. And uh, leaves, I think those were also a cutter. Some of them were molds. This was a mold. I love that fern leaf. And this was just a cane I had with, matter of fact, I think I still have some of that, just to make it look like maybe a little bush or something. I made a vine that came up with three pretty flowers up here, and those were molded. I put a little angel, a little cherub, on the back with a dragonfly, and again, a couple more flowers. And you can just see, I just kind of played with it. I cut holes in it so a light could come through. And I used a lot of hearts because this being a heart, I even put the heart window in the door. So I'm thinking I may do the same thing um, just because I kind of like the hearts. And this is my favorite. This is the top. And this is a Martha Stewart. This here is a Martha Stewart um, flower. And I took the flower and added petals to it which made it look like a huge flower that was the roof of the little fairy house. Looks like a big sunflower. So this will not turn out the same way. No two of them will ever turn out the same, but I'm going to keep this here to use for inspiration. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take all this clay, and I may even need more. I won't know till I... I'm really bad at... Um, estimating quantities of clay and I sold my uh, Everneed so I don't have that anymore to kind of squash this together so it'll be a slower process but I'm going to just press all this together until I can get it to a point where I can put it through the pasta machine to blend it. Now you'll see I even have some of our crackle. Remember the crackle we did the other day? I even have some of that in there and I don't care because this is going to be um, 
covered up. I'm going to antique it. I'm going to put stuff over it. So I really don't care if it's got things mixed in it that won't, you know, mix actually in with the clay. But uh, just roll, I'm going to just roll this out. And of course, I'm not going to make you watch me do this, but I am going to keep rolling this until it gets flat enough to go in the pasta machine. And then I will be back. Okay, I, my pile of scrap has grown because I decided I wanted to clean off my table. So these are just bits and pieces of clay that has been sitting here that I've just never gotten around to putting away because it seems like every time I get to my clay desk, I end up having to make a video. So my desk just gets piled up. So I've added some more. And I'm really at a point where I think maybe I need to cut this into sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just cut this into manageable sections that I can, you know, get to the pasta machine. And it's really interesting when you do this, when you pile clay on top of clay and you start rolling it. Look at that. You know, you can, there's some really interesting things you can do with some of this clay. See, here's some of the faux wood that I did not too long ago. But I'm going to just chop this into smaller pieces. And then that way, you don't have so much to roll through the pasta machine. I better move that out of the way before I knock it over. You don't have so much to roll through the pasta machine at one time. And you can do each one of these separate, and then you can start blending them together. So I'm going to take this one. Let me set my pasta machine on the, low, on the smallest the largest setting rather and I'm going to roll this through and I'm sorry you can't see my pasta machine but if I show you the I have to totally move my, everything on my desk in order to get the camera over there so I'm afraid you just won't be able to see that part but I don't think it's really all that interesting watching somebody put something in a pasta machine but let me just show you what I mean I'm going to do with this and just pick up any little pieces that are on your table and just run it through on the thickest setting. And my pasta machine's unplugged because I use that outlet. There we go. For something else. So here we go. <laughs> now you see how that looks? All I'm going to do is just fold it, and I'll probably put it through this way. I like to turn my clay. If you just keep folding it, you know, like this is where I folded it. If I put that fold into the pasta machine, then these end pieces are never going to get blended into the center. So what I do, and I'll show you, I folded it. I'm going to turn it a quarter of a turn. I'm going to run that through the pasta machine. All right, so I'm going to fold it, and I'm going to turn it a quarter, and that way this is going to get blended up into the top part. So I'll just keep doing this. You see, just fold it in half and turn it one quarter. Another thing you want to do, like these tops, make sure that when you fold it, you leave these against some of the other clay so that it will blend into that clay. But again, I'm going to turn it a quarter of a turn. Now, you don't want to turn it all the way because you want this fold to either be on the bottom, putting it in this way, or on the side so that air can escape. So don't ever put it so that the fold is on top or you're going to end up with air in your clay. But let me just do this one more time to show you how this is now going to blend into the clay. And I'll continue doing that. 
and I will be back uh, after this all some of this is blended okay I'm back just for a minute I wanted to show you that um, you don't have to blend them totally when you're doing this all you need to do is get them into a workable sheet see this is not blended at all it's still got some different colorations uh, this one has still got some stripes because you're going to be blending these together so what I think I will do is the, kind of put like sizes together I'm going to go back and I'm going to blend these two pieces together and then these two pieces together and then I will blend those together and I'll come out with one great big sheet uh, of scrap clay and if we don't use it you can just I have a drawer where I keep uh, scrap sheets and I'll just keep it in there then the next time I need some scrap you know some brown or whatever I'll just go get those and use them so I just wanted to show you that you do not have to completely blend them at the first step because as you blend these together they will get really blended well then so I will be back like I said, I'm going to blend these two blend these two then I'll blend those two together and then I'll be back okay you can see that I have a nice it's not even totally blended because again I am going to be antiquing it but it's blended enough that if nothing else it looks like wood and this is the one time I wish I did have a wider pasta machine because this was ended up being rolled to the width of my pasta machine which is only five and a half inches now you can get a 8 inch pasta machine I believe the Macon's is like 8 inches 7 or 8 inches but still you're restricted to the uh, width of the pasta machine there are other pasta machines on the market um, there is a uh, machine that called the dream machine that is put out by um, polymer clay express there's the Lucy clay machine and you know that but and, I, and I've had both and they're great machines if you do this type of thing all the time but I found that that most of my clay that I do I do a lot of blending I do a lot of smaller things so they, it really didn't it was more work for me to use those for small projects but if you're using large amounts of clay on a regular basis you know say you're doing production work or you're making a large thing like covering this votive then you know that might be worth looking into uh, getting one of the larger machines but my little atlas is doing me just fine now what I think I'm going to do I'm trying to think of the best way to cover this and on this one I did leave the top open so that's what I'll do I'm thinking it would be easier to go around this than it would be to cover the top and we'll do the top as a separate a separate uh, process so I'm just going to start here and I'm just going to bend the clay as I go to, to match the roundness of this votive and I probably should have cut this before I started I'm going to use a longer blade and just cut a straight edge because it'll be easier to match it up to the other clay if it's a straight edge because it's one is not going to go all the way around it I could have left this one big sheet but in doing that it would makes it a little bit harder to handle and since I'm going to be doing putting stuff on top of this it really didn't bother me but you'll see that what I'm doing I'm just using my fingers to slowly mold the clay see it's there's no puckering or anything here whatever you see here is just different colors of clay but you just take it slowly I'll do show you on the bottom just like I got this end molded so I'll just slowly do this don't try to do it too much at one time or you'll have puckering and then you'll have to you know cut the pucker out and 
trust me, I've done this before, and that is exactly what happens. So I'm going to be cutting the bottom off, and I may do part of it now, just so I don't have all this extra clay. And I'm just going to take my blade and just go across the bottom, and I'll go across the top the same way. I probably cut a little bit too much off there, but that'll all get fixed later when we put the flower on top. This will be the bottom. And you don't want the bottom, if you're going to use this sitting this way, you don't want the bottom to um, be covered in clay. So you're going to want this to be flush, but like I said, we're going to be playing with this so it doesn't have to be flush right now. So neither one of these sides ended up being straight because we're working with a curved surface. So let me just straighten this out a little bit, make a cut. And I'm just making the cut just to have a straight edge that I can match the next piece up to. And that's a little bit straighter. And so then we go to the next one, and I'll use my longer blade. I don't have a handle on these. These are made to go on handles. But I will just cut that smooth. And butt that up against this. And what I would do is butt it up in the middle first and make sure that meets, and then you can work with the rest of it. And we will smooth this out a little bit as we get to the end, or as we continue to work on it. But just make sure it's all stuck together, and then do the same thing with this piece as you did the last piece. Just kind of wrap it around. We can even see where it's going to meet. Let's just press this to make a line. Can you see that line? I'm going to cut on that line, and it's going to stretch. But this will give us a guideline as to how far this is going to go. But again, meet it in the middle where the curve is the fattest, and then just slowly mold the clay. And see, if I did this quickly, and I'll just give you an answer, see, the, the clay would go like this, and it would fold on itself, and then I'd have a pucker and have to clean, you know, cut out that pucker. But I prefer to just do it slowly. And remember, you are the boss of the clay. The clay is going to do what you tell it to do, not what it wants to do. <laughs> I tell myself that, but sometimes it does argue back. But again, just match up those straight edges and mold the rest. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut off this part so I can sit it down. And see, it may not be all the way stuck. And with when you're doing something like this on glass, people are always asking me about, do you have to put anything on it for your clay to stick to glass? In this case, you do not. And that's because there is a shape to this. You've got a smaller area here, so it's not going to slide down because it gets fatter. And because it's fatter in the middle, it's not going to slip this way because you've got another side over here. So as long as there's a difference in shape that will ensure that your clay will not pop off, then you really don't need to use anything. I'm just going to set that down. 
and do the same thing on this that I did on the other. Although this time I may show you another option if you didn't want to mold so much. You can do this again, make a little mark, and come back and trim. Just to show you what happens if you do you know, end up getting a pucker. But like I said, I prefer to just mold it. Just push it. You can see it from a different angle here where you can see where I'm just pushing it up. And it's smooth on the votive. And all the puckering is above it. And you just do that by slowly molding it. Got a little piece of clay there, but that's all right. Like I said, this is just like a preliminary trim. Because as you work with this, it's going to stretch. And I've got all this left over, but I'm going to hold on to it because you never know. And at this point, this does not have to be very clean, but I will clean it up anyway. And you can see here, it's just, it scoops down a little bit. Now you do have the option. You can put a little piece of clay in there if you want. It's not necessary because we are going to be putting the flower over top of it. But some people feel better not having those little differences. So just cut a piece and slip it in there. You'll just have one more seam to smooth out. And see, that kind of took care of that little place. But we do have a seam. And you can do different things. I like to use my fingers because I can feel the clay move under my fingers. But you can take your roller or if you have a small roller, like where's my small little roller? It is over here somewhere. I don't see it right at the moment. But anyway, if you've got a small roller, you can use that. But, you know, you can roll it with your rod. With your rod. And that almost makes it fade away. Then all you got to do is just take your fingers and rub over that. And it, it totally erases that seam. So you can't even see it up here now. And you just do the same thing. You can roll it, like I said, roll it with your roller. Or you can use your fingers. And what I'm going to do with these videos is I am going to break them up because if I did this on one video, you'd be here all day. So I'm going to do this in sections. Today, I'm going to just show you, I showed you how to cover your votive. And we may texture it a little bit. Smooth out your seams. Your fingers really are one of your best clay tools. Your fingers can do a lot with clay. And I still have this seam over here. Sorry for the silence. But you see, it's really easy to smooth out your seams if you roll them as flat as you can with the roller and then go over it with your finger or your thumb. You can push the clay with your fingers, which helps to cover up 
some of them. You can see there's a pretty big fingerprint where I was holding on to it. Now you do have some options here. Some people will bake theirs. Once they get this covered like this, they will go ahead and bake it. Other people like to do some of the decorations before they bake it, because otherwise you have to um, use liquid clay or a baking bond to attach everything. But I like to work as long as I can on the raw clay and I do I like that because you can get your you can use smaller things to um, I'm just smoothing out fingerprints if you're wondering what I'm doing but you can smooth out places you can create you know you might change your mind on something you're doing now I'm gonna keep my scrap clay here but I think I will continue to work. Now, I'm going to make the bottom of this votive the top. So when I'm working on this, it's going the, the open part is going to be the bottom because, again, I'm going to make it so that you can put a tea light inside. So then the first thing I want to do, and I should have done this before, is I have some texture sheets... I say I have some texture sheets. These are texture sheets. But I do have some somewhere that looks like wood. And I believe it's one of these hard ones. Excuse me while I dig through my... I'm just looking at my Sculpey ones to see if they have a wood. They have something, I guess that's supposed to be wood, I don't know. But I do have a texture sheet somewhere. I've got this one. Oh, I know what I want. I don't want it to look like wood. I want it to look like... Um, tiles, bricks. And there's a brick here on the Sculpey. Can you, I don't know if you can see it or not. The Sculpey. I'm not sure which one this is, but it is a Sculpey texture sheet. And I may keep this one out too, just because it's got a different texture. Let me put my drawer back in. But what I'm going to do is just, and I'm not going to be all over, but I'm going to just roll this on my just put it in places not solid see that is not solid I've just got some little little things that look like bricks the bottom is going to be covered up and the very tip top is going to be covered up and we're going to cut windows and we're going to cut doors but I just want some kind of rough texture in the part that isn't going to get covered up. So it will look like little fairies took some time to actually build this little house. And I'll show you what I mean when I go back over. I'll show you my the other one. I just want to finish this, if, or else I'm liable to forget. But just keep pressing all the way around. Let's say it doesn't have to be solid. You're just wanting to give the illusion that there's bricks or something. I like these little stones. I know you probably can't see them very well. So I don't know if you can see the very, it's a very subtle 
texture, but it, it's instead of just being slick clay, it's got sort of a natural look to it. And let me show you on this one what I mean. See here I used a different brick type thing. And I just put, you know, like I put a piece here. There's a little bit down in here under the bushes. A um, little bit over here. There's some hidden in here, but it's not solid. You know, you don't need it solid. See, I've got some in there and there. And right now it's not going to show up, but when I antique it, it will. So I am think this is going to be the end of part one. I want everybody to go out and get yourselves a either go to Dollar Tree and get a little votive uh, or a vase. I don't know what you would call this. It's pretty large for a votive, but it could be. Um, and get your your scrap clay and mold, you know mix it all together and cover your votive. And then next week I will come back and I will show you. We'll cut windows and doors and decorate those. And then the third week we will decorate it with the flowers and put a top on it. So I hope you're going to join me with this. It's, it'd be fun to do one together instead of me sitting here doing all the work and you just watching. So I'd love it if you would go out and get something. You'll have a week and you don't even have to have the Sculpey texture sheet. This one does have some rocks on it. I don't know how I can get this to where you can see. See those? look sort of like stones you know or you can use I don't even remember what I used on the other I have a whole book full of plastic texture sheets it might have been one of those that I used to put the larger tiles in and I might do that later because these are kind of smaller stones but get your scrap clays together blend them up cover a votive you know, smooth out the seams and add some kind of texture. And then we'll be back again next week. We'll continue with, make, you know, cutting the windows and doors. And then we'll put on the flowers and the roof and antique it. So, everybody, have fun with this. This is going to be a lot of fun. And I'll be going through all of my molds so I can figure out which ones I want to use. I'll probably use a lot of the same ones because they turned out so well. So, have a great weekend. Well, I guess it's a great week. This will be on Monday. I'm filming this on Friday, so it kind of makes it hard. So, have a great week, and come back next week, and we'll go on to the next step of making our very own fairy house. So, everybody have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.